Hey everybody, it is the Laser Wizard. Fox Alien just sent me their newest flagship CNC router, the Vasto. And this thing is, I'm most excited for this machine here. It's the heaviest, biggest, and most professional machine they've made so far. And comes in three separate boxes, which is actually great because there'd be no way that one big box could be managed. I think all in total, it's about, it's over a hundred pounds, these three boxes. I haven't weighed them, but I'm very excited to open them up. I, this thing came in last night. I wanted to rip up, rip into them, but figured I'd do that with y'all watching me. That way there's no smoke or mirrors. What you see is what I'm going to see and experience. And... Well, let's get started. I'm going to go one box at a time. I'll start off with box number one, then I'll do box number two, and then box number three. Box three is by far the heaviest, then it's box one, and then box two. Okay, here is box number one. I'm going to see what's inside. This one is pretty heavy. I'm going to assume probably... The x-axis gantry, maybe even the z-axis. All right, so here we go. It actually passed quality control, that's a good sign. Okay, well, let's start off with the least exciting thing, the spindle. It looks just like the one for the 4040XE, but it's supposed to be a 400 watt instead of 300. It comes with a ER11 collet, uh, eighth inch, I believe. This is the Z-axis on linear bearings, very nicely wrapped, and a nice ball screw. I believe it's a 12 millimeter ball screw, and I think these are 15 millimeter linear rails, and quite a big stepper motor, especially for a Z-axis. Looks like the only other thing in here is this massive gantry. There we go. This thing is a beauty. I think this thing alone weighs more, much more than most of Foxillion's other machines. And what's interesting, I thought these were going to be 2040s. They look like they're 2060s here. And then 2020s going vertically. That makes for an extremely rigid and strong x-axis gantry this is like a ladder pattern frame the ball screw on here is bigger i think it's a 1605 very nice well, so that concludes box number one i'm sure there's going to be even much more excitement in the next boxes i actually misspoke uh, when i mentioned these rails here, these vertical supports are 2040s, they're not 2020s. 2040s, oh, and these are 2060s. And what's nice is that they have actually, the top one's got these plastic inserts going along the top. That way chips don't get all jammed up in there. Just wanted to set the record straight. All right, next up is gonna be box number two.
believe box two is the lightest of the bunch. So it's probably just the instructions in here, maybe some wires. What did I tell you? We've got our packaging list and an instruction manual. I'll make sure to go over that later. I believe these are the dust shields for the y-axis. Very lightweight. I think they are aluminum. Power cord. Some additional brackets. These might be for the drag chains. This might be a drag chain support for the x-axis. Again, I'm just guessing here. I'm just pulling this stuff out. Okay. Very neatly tucked away drag chain. Looks Pretty much the same as it did on the 4040XE, same type of connectors and pretty much the same type of aircraft connectors on the controller end. Everything is very nicely labeled. And right off the bat, I can see that this control box is much bigger than the 4040XC. Well, check it out. If I did not take it out like that, I might not have noticed, but you can actually swap between 220 and 110 voltage supplies. Power switch on the back. So it does not have a built-in offline controller, but that's fine. I rarely really use it. I prefer using the computer. And you've got your laser spindle switch here, nicely labeled. Laser connection. Here's where you can plug in your offline controller. USB for connecting to your computer. And obviously all the connections. The other real nice thing is that they've got pause, resume, and a reset button. All the controllers, technically, the Gerbil controllers have those inputs, but none of the previous routers or machines came with those buttons pre-wired. You could always add them on, but here they are right on the controller. And right there is a lot of people's biggest problem. They don't realize the e-stop is pushed in and you have to twist it to release it. This one was clicked in, probably to save a few millimeters in shipping. And... The potentiometer knob for adjusting the speed and this is going to be for the built-in power supply for the 400 watt spindle we'll use that for a little bit but then that's going to be very soon quickly upgraded to a more professional spindle Ooh, i almost didn't look under here this is what i love this is beautiful this i believe not only is it gorgeous and orange but this is the spindle bracket for the stock spindle as well as for the laser module these notches here are for slipping in a laser module but you know I've got a few dedicated laser machines I probably not gonna mess around with sticking a laser in here but this is what's awesome they've included two spindle brackets so you don't have to go and purchase them in addition. This is the 65 millimeter and the 69 millimeter. Previously, Fox Alien only had the 69 millimeter spindle clamp for DeWalt routers. But me and a lot of people like using the Makita style ones, of which there are a lot of clones, and they are 65 millimeter diameter. My plan is to install a VFD drive spindle which I purchased water cooled 800 watts and it is 65 millimeter diameter so this is gonna come in very handy 
And I just love, I mean, they didn't have to, but they went out of their way, anodized them orange. So that is awesome. The hardware usually always comes very neatly organized in a nice box. A brush for cleaning up. A USB cable. And right here we've got our hold down clamps. Looks like three packs of router bits. A Z probe, USB drive, and some Allen wrenches. I'm gonna open these up and delve into them deeper a little bit later on. But that concludes box number two. So that means all the rest of the excitement is going to be in box number three. All right, so uh, all these parts definitely are going to fit on my little desk here. So before I bring out box number three, I'm going to clear off this desk just like that. Okay, well, last box is box number three. By far the heaviest box. And... I can understand why both y axis rails are going to be in it, the cross rails will be in it, and the entire bed. And I hope you guys are using my veiny forearms as a scale of judgment of how much all these parts weigh. So here's box number three. So the bed is nice, it comes in these individual segments. And I, mean, I think that's all that's left is the two white rails, which man, they are massive. Let's see, two. Four, six, eight, ten. Wow. I thought these were going to be 2080s. They're 2100s. And at the top, you've got your 15 millimeter linear bearing rail bolted on and two bearing blocks. And a very nicely machined solid aluminum carriage plate. You've got your ball screw thrust bearing here. Coupling. The other bearing block on the end, limit switches, and man, very nice plates all around. I like the orange color. I believe they're all aluminum. couldn't figure out how to use this as a router you could at least use this for some dumbbells but I'm quite sure this thing will make a phenomenal router okay. that concludes the unboxing so Got all the parts, most of them, laid out here on the desk here. And remember I mentioned that there should be these x-axis uh, rails. And I realized, I'm like, I don't think I saw them. And luckily they have a full package list. And right there, x-axis profile, two of them. And I'm digging through the boxes. I'm like, what happened? Did they seriously not include it? Like... For sure it's got to be somewhere and it's not the first time that I've seen that they've got it very well hidden. But right here, there's this hidden compartment and there they are. As careful as I try to be, 
there's always surprises to be found. So, so far, I mean, I haven't itemized every single nut and bolt, but everything's here. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what is in this box here. Um, here's a set of 30 degree V-bits, I believe a 0.2 millimeter tip diameter. These are called, I believe, fishtail bits. Um, they're pretty good for MDF or wood, um, decent for getting started. Here is the z height Pro, very nifty and handy. A USB thumb drive with hopefully all the files. Although I personally, I don't actually install the drivers from here nor the software. Uh, I prefer to just go and get the latest ones off the website. Here is a package of tools, Allen wrenches and two I mean, real professional open-end open wrenches here as opposed to some uh, sheet metal ones. Got some clips. And it looks like these are the hold downs for holding material down. I don't usually use these. I, I don't do much in wood. I do. I try to stick with aluminum. And for those, I usually use fixture plates, but we'll get into that later. The um, reason I did this first is because I wanted to get access to the tools in order to use them to assemble the machine. So step one of the assembly is just attaching the dust baffles to the two Y rails. And we'll do that right now. You just need the two Y axes. You need the baffles and you need some bolts. And they have all the hardware beautifully organized and labeled in this box. And the eight that we need are right here. All right, well, so we're on step one, and I'm already a little uh, bamboozled here. So this baffle is what looks like there's no standoff, so it's supposed to sit flush up against this rail. But there's just a slight design flaw that I found. Nothing to, I mean, maybe a deal breaker, but this cable right here, there's no room for it without it getting pinched. No matter where it goes, you know, this baffle is supposed to sit flush against here. And not even this cable, but even this guy right here. This guy sticks out. And even though this baffle is very soft metal and it really doesn't matter in the long run, um, you, know, you could bolt it on kind of softly. But I'm going to actually reroute this wire so that that baffle can sit flush and it's not going to be pinching the cables. Now that we got the baffles on, step number two is installing the elusive x-axis profiles. I'm going to combine steps two and three because they both pertain to installing the x-axis profiles. Um, the x-axis gets bolted on or those profiles get bolted on from the front and sides which makes for very nice rigid connection. one of my rails in one of the corners and yeah, right here <clears throat> almost every time I order any extrusions um, they be is bound to have a corner that's nicked so this one just had a slight little nick like an impact so what happens is it extrudes the aluminum and there's a little step which would cause it not to sit flush so just a word of caution you should always check over the corners of all your extrusions and make sure they're flat and the aluminum is super soft I spent maybe 15-20 seconds to just file it down just to make sure that you know even if it's below the surface it's better that it's lower than the surface than higher up 
So when you bolt it, everything sits flush. So there's also a very important reason why we're combining steps two and three together and that is because you know there's wiggle room between all the bolt holes and how they can get snugged up you never want to snug any one bolt up until you have all the bolts installed so we're going to go ahead and stick all the bolts that go in through the sides that way that those rails can get pulled in as tight as they can be but at the same time, I'm also going to be torquing these bolts a little bit at a time each so it all gets pulled together evenly and tightly. And we'll worry about checking the straightness after that, or the squareness, should I say. Okay, so here is how I'm going to tighten up my machine. Um, it's my recommendation. Your, your methods may vary than mine, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tighten these just a little bit, just enough to start compressing the lock ring. That way, this extrusion is actually already being pulled by the force of those lock rings, so it's, you can be pretty sure that it's flat up against this, essentially clamping it down. However, it'll still allow them to slip, and now I will tighten these two bolts over here and these will be the first ones that I tighten very tight before going ahead and then finishing these up very important to make sure they are tight because I mean this machine's gonna go through quite a bit of forces and vibrations and you don't want the stuff to rattle loose. So the super old office desk that I'm using as my uh, assembly surface here is bowing down in the middle here. And now that I've tightened all four corners mostly tight and the machine strained itself out, uh, it's wobbling now. So what I'm gonna do I believe I've got this pretty thick slab of wood. I'm gonna go run and grab it and I'm gonna lay that on top of the workbench here and then put the machine on top of it. Hopefully that piece of wood is big enough to fit the four feet of the corners of this machine. Um, and then hopefully I'll use that as my reference point. Ideally if I had a uh, surface plate, a, a granite surface plate, you know, you would assemble a machine on something like that. You know, this is a still a hobby grade machine despite it having bulb screws and linear rails um, it's like the hobby version of an industrial machine here so this slab of wood is going to be my hobby version of a surface plate so let's go and grab it okay this piece of wood that I had is actually perfect uh, it's actually an inch thick like hard density fiberboard this piece weighs 40 pounds I could barely carry this thing and it's nicely covered on all edges with some sort of plastic veneer um, and it's definitely pretty it's definitely very rigid because you know it shows it doesn't it doesn't sag with the sagging table um, but it definitely is flexing down because I can lift this corner up a little bit before the other two corners lift up so I'm just gonna grab a level and just kind of rudimentarily level this thing off before I put the machine back on it. That way I get kind of close. Later on, I'll worry about really fine tuning the squareness. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. I used some of my laser cutoff scraps, one in the back corner and three of them here. And it's pretty close. I mean, as far as my bubble level can tell me, um, God willing, one day I hope to put the machine on a surface plate and ultimately also build a new machine base for it. That way it can be rigid 
and have some mass to it for vibration dampening. But again, that is for a later time. So now I'm going to put the machine back up on here. So since I assembled this machine on a very warped table, the machine now is a little warped. So I'm going to crack all the bolts loose again and then I'm going to retighten them. And that's it. And it should be pretty close. I've just gone through and I loosened all the bolts connecting these rails to the Y axes. And then I just retighten them in the exact same procedure I talked about. And it made a huge difference. Before this corner was springy, it was flopping up and down. And now... Every corner is sitting nice and flat on the surface. But I know for a fact the surface ain't uh, perfectly flat. Because um, I mean, I was using three and a half millimeter spacers. What are the odds I'm not off by 0.1 millimeters or 0.01? Now, ideally, you want your machine base to be as flat as possible. But being that it's a hobby grade machine, you know. Something that's kind of difficult to provide. It's a very expensive thing, uh, machine precision. But that's up as a hobbyist. You can kind of fine tune that. And and I've got ideas how to, you know, get it perfect or at least close because it'll never be perfect. But ultimately, the frame of the machine will have to get bolted down to some sort of surface. Because if you can imagine, if I were to bolt all three corners of the machine except this one, if I bolted those three down then I would be able to lift this up and in fact right now it's just gravity holding the machine and this corner is going up and down but not the other two here only this one and what that means is when the machine is acting upon the bed it'll want to stretch and pull and, t and warp the actual plane of the bed here but if you bolt it down to a much more rigid surface then it'll get held down and this surface will add its rigidity to the machine structure um, as nice of a piece of wood as this is I think I've decided I will actually I'll make some brackets that attach from these corner brackets and bolt down to this uh, piece of wood here that way it'll do a ton of dampening and it'll keep every corner down from lifting off uh, and I'm sure the machine will sound and perform much better. All right, next step is the spoil board. Um, well, they call it the spoil board, but it comes in these nice aluminum extrusions, each piece. So this extrusion is like that, and once you put two of them together, each edge forms a T-track or a T-slot track for hold-on clamps. That makes it very, very nice. Okay, I'm gonna lay all the boards out, put the screws in, kind of everything, you know, loose at first, and then I'll snug them up at the end. very straightforward and I'm not sure how you know perfectly precise the rails have to be there's enough slop that whatever you mount I mean you can square off um, next step after this is the most exciting well so far maybe and that's the x-axis gantry um, some of y'all may need help putting this on uh, depending on how big of a breakfast you might have had but it's pretty heavy and you gotta line it up but and we'll see how that goes. So in the process of me playing around with all the parts, you know, I move these around. What that means, there's no way that both axes are in the same position. And before attempting to put the x-axis gantry on, um, for sure the y1 and the y2 axes have to be at the exact same position because you know the machine's still a hobby grade machine 
Uh, it's still made out of aluminum extrusions. Um, so there's still flex to it for sure, but not much, especially with this machine. This machine, I mean, it's striving to be as rigid as possible. Um, so what I've got here is just a scrap. I pull this out of my scrap wood pile. It's a laser cut piece. I save some of my scraps here. And I'm just going to use this as my reference point. That's just to show us. I grabbed the ruler and I was going to measure it, but this is actually way more precise. And it doesn't have to be high tech. So I'm just going to make sure that it's close. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to move that one over so that it matches. And then I'm going to put the gantry on. Just like that and we should be able to hoist this thing up So, looks like it's a little tight. I don't know if it needs to be preloaded or if I need to maybe loosen some of these and maybe this needs to get flexed inwards a little bit. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. I have gone around and I've loosened the two bolts in the back and then the four bolts on the front holding those x-axis profiles in and I'm hoping that that will allow the Y1 and Y2 rails to kind of pivot. I, I left these bolts that go in on the ends, I left those on to hold it all together. So now I'm going to attempt to slip this x-axis gantry on a second time. well so what I'm gonna do right now is I will first mount these plates on and then I'll snug the bolts back on that way there's as minimal preload on the system as possible x-axis gantry is bolted on now we go on to the z-axis module and the first thing that we do with the z-axis is, and I believe this was just literally just for shipping sake, uh, they don't have this bolted on, this comes loose and tucked away. So you just gotta bolt this on and then bolt on the z-axis to the x-axis carriage. never be too sure. Now uh, before I throw the z-axis up on the carriage I'm just gonna go ahead and confirm that all these bolts are nice and snug because then they'll be much harder to find and tighten later. Ideally all of these should have Loctite on them unfortunately they do not um, so there are chances for vibrations to loosen some of these bolts up so it's good practice to make sure everything's tightened um, once I have I mean, as I'm going along I'm tightening whatever I see and I can but at the very end I'm gonna also go over like all the bolts on all the extrusions here like see this one up here was already pretty loose this one too yeah see I don't know maybe I'm over torquing them but my humble opinion, that should be pretty tight. Like they say, German spec. Yeah, actually, yeah, these were 
definitely could benefit from being a little bit tighter. So keep that in mind. Common other areas are the couplings and the stepper motors can come loose. Um, wherever vibration goes, uh, it's almost inevitable that it'll loosen them both up, especially when there's no thread locking compound on there. So it could save, potentially save you a lot of headaches and trouble invest a little bit of time and go over everything while you're ahead of the game. I realized that only one of the holes is exposed and the other one back here is actually blocked by the current z-axis position so I'm just going to manually spin it over so I can get all four at once. Okay, that should be plenty. Well, I think I just realized why this comes unbolted, because it gets in the way of this bolt. So I'm going to take this right back off, put this bolt in. Um, That feels extremely rigid. The next step in the manual is mounting the spindle with the spindle clamp. Um, this machine is great. It comes with the regular, I believe, 52 millimeter diameter clamp or a lot of the standard 300 and 400 and 500 watt brushed DC spindles. But the great thing is that they already include a 65 millimeter and a 69 millimeter spindle clamp. This one is to accommodate the DeWalt trim router that's very popular to use. This one uh, fits the Makita style ones. Uh, I personally use the Bauer brand one. There's a ton of clones out there. And 65 millimeters is also what um, some VFD drives, uh, or those spindles, should I say, they're 65 millimeter diameter. I have one that I purchased for my 4040XE. That's what's going to go on here. It's an 800 watt water cooled, uh, three phase brushless you know, VFD spindle. Um, that's the end goal. Uh, but for this video and for my first test, I'll, I'll give this guy a whirl the stock spindle which is a 400 watt brushed spindle and honestly uh, I consider this spindle as just practice just to get you going make sure that the machine works and everything moves the way it should but this should be the number one thing the first thing you upgrade um, this is like training wheels the end goal is to is to get rid of this you should not be trying to use this. this one's 400 watts I mean I'm not haven't used it yet but there's a lot of elements that I will go over in a separate video when I upgrade my spindle um, why you want to upgrade I mean absolutely that's that's the power of your machine uh, this is for sure the bottleneck in terms of unleashing power <clears throat> like once you put a trim router on here then you can push much harder through material much faster the rpm here is limited to 10,000 Trim routers are like 24,000, so you can literally double the feed rate to maintain the same you know, theoretical chip load, and this machine for sure can handle that load. So I'll put this guy on, run some tests, um, then I'll probably take my trim router, my Bauer, off my 4040XE, which has worked phenomenally, and I'll put that on here because I believe most people will probably go with a trim router um, because they're cheap. My router was about, I think, $65 on sale at Harbor Freight, and that's that's hard to beat to get. And I believe they're close to 800 watts, uh, but they take AC. Um, so I'll put that on with the 65 millimeter clamp, and then maybe do some tests with it. 
so people can understand what the potential is with the trim router but then I'll go and get my VFD drive and we'll see how that one compares the VFD drive is nice because you can vary the, the RPM without losing the torque and the power to the motor plus you can go much lower RPM and still maintain the full power and being that it's liquid cool it'll stay cooler because my power gets pretty warm so I'll go over spindles and spindle options like I said hopefully in another video for now we'll stick with what we got here So this spindle clamp has what I was talking about earlier here about these countersinked holes. Well, these are counter bored and that allows there to be movement within the bolts and the mounting here. So you could snug it up this way or you can snug it up the other way. And that's a couple degrees of movement there. Um, so that process is called tramming of the spindle. It's a very important process. But that's something that's done once you got the machine up and running and you have to get it pretty close and then you surface the waste board to make sure that it is parallel to the XY plane and then you perform the proper tramming procedure. I will probably go over tramming in a different video because that is an entire process on its own and besides uh, there's already tons of videos on YouTube going over the process and it's no different than what you're going to go through here. So for now, I'm really not even going to bother much. I'm just going to snug these left two bolts. I'm going to stick the spindle in and then I will tram it later on. We'll do a rough tramming. I'll show you how, how to do that. It's quite simple. Feels very nice and solid. The Z axis carriage plate has four sets of these bolts, and the way that this clamp is spaced is that they can fit on between any you know, of one of three positions basically, and that's to accommodate different uh, stock heights. Your Z travel, you only need enough Z travel to accommodate your bit cutter length. I mean, there's nothing much more you can really do to a degree, much more than your cutter length. But let's say you put something that's very tall and you want to work on it up here or it's something much lower. So you might have to reposition this bracket depending on what you're doing. Um, that messes with the tramming, obviously. That's if you've got big differences in stock diameter. For smaller differences, you can crack these loose and slide the spindle up and down. Um, but for rigidity's sake, you want ideally the clamp to be as low as possible and the spindle to be as high as possible so that the spindle is held down as close to the cutter as possible. Um, that's for maximum rigidity. And for my purposes, I'll probably be doing mostly aluminum plates, quarter inch up to half inch, maybe one inch thick. So I want my router, you know, everything to be kind of down low instead of kind of, you know, extending out too far. The other clamps, these have a wider footprint, so they go, they can only go between two positions. They skip a bolt pad. So before connecting up the controller, I've decided to take it apart so I always like taking everything apart and looking at it thoroughly making sure it's all nice and tight and here's the power supply four individual digital stepper drivers two for the Y one for the X and one for the Z and the controller is tucked away back here it's still an 8-bit Arduino based controller however there is a coolant output pin there for turning on and off you know an air assist or a vacuum or whatever you'd like probably M7 or M8 turns that on 
but I'm happy with what I see. Simple, but everything seems very well wired and put together. I tugged on all the connections and I shook them, nothing seems loose. And pause, and zoom, and whatever other buttons are up on here. Reset. They're all wired up pretty nice. I've skipped over recording all the details of the wiring installation that's pretty straightforward um, you just have to mount a couple brackets route some cables and it all comes together and it's actually been uh, quite a few months uh, since I've actually assembled the machine physically and then did the wiring um, and I've actually already gone ahead and invested in the spindle that I'm gonna test out on here and this is actually it's an 80 millimeter diameter it's a 2.2 kilowatt ER20 collet spindle I figured this was probably gonna be one of the most appropriate spindles for this machine it is feels like it it's meant for it so next, I'm going to wire it up, and I'm going to run it and run some tests, but that's probably going to be in the next video. So what are my initial thoughts now that it is fully assembled? Well, honestly, I'm extremely impressed. I'm super excited to try this thing out. It is put together very well. I've not measured, you know how accurate all the linear rails and ball screws relative to each other are but I have jogged the machine around and it moves smoothly <clears throat> it does not seem to bind anywhere I cannot personally perceive any flex on the gantry on the z-axis only on the slats and very little bit but upgrading the beds the, the easy part the control box uh, is very nice, it's very upgradable. It's got individual external stepper drivers in it. Uh, it's got additional buttons wired up, which can come in very handy. Um, it's got the exact same wiring harness as the 4040XE, which is pretty good. It's got the aircraft connectors on the back. Um, I didn't end up using any of the spindle clamps because I ended up going with my own. So in the next video, I'm going to run some tests. Uh, I've just been doing aluminum. Uh, I'm sure it can handle wood. I'm not going to waste my time on wood, uh, at least not in the beginning. I'm, I'm interested in trying it out, how it's going to fare on aluminum, what kind of surface finishes I can get, and accuracy. And almost all those parameters are going to be up to the user and the operator. As long as you've got the right feeds and speeds set, the right bits, and the right cam strategies, there's absolutely no reason this thing shouldn't make some beautiful stuff. So, it's been a long video already. Thank you guys for bearing with me. I hope that my video was informative. I hope it gave you an idea about this machine, how it looks, how it behaves, and what you get. So I'm very happy with what I got. And if you found this 
helpful or informational, please like and subscribe. That would help me a lot. And then you'll get to see the next videos. I'm hoping to dish out videos much quicker now. Especially now that I got this machine operational. Thank you guys so much. Take care.